Well, e-bikes come in all shapes and sizes, and today's model is an Engway EP2 Pro that they sent me for review. Is a folding e-bike in your future? Is that something you've thought about? Let's take a look at this one. I'll show you its features, and I'll tell you some of the pros and cons of having a folding e-bike. Engway has been manufacturing bikes for over 20 years, and they've sold over 600,000 e-bikes worldwide. So the company's been around for quite a while. You buy direct from them. There's no middleman, but they do. They are warehoused in the United States and in Europe, so shipping wouldn't take very long. In fact, after I ordered this one, it was just a matter of a few days before it showed up on my porch. This one is Engway's electric mountain bike. It has the four inch by 20 inch fat tires on it. And my shadow going across it here. It's got a 750 watt rear hub drive motor, seven speed Shimano derailleur on the back. A nice size usable rack. A comfortable seat, I've been riding on it, and easy to use controls, we'll get into those in a moment. Now it has mechanical brakes. It comes in three colors. It comes in black, a bright orange, and this metallic gray. One thing that's interesting is Engway also makes a, a bike that's the same size as this, although it has rear suspension. It's called the Engway engine pro and it has regenerative braking on it uh, that's something that's fairly new in other words the battery recharges when you're braking and when you're going downhill i'm not sure it's uh, it's worthwhile but it may be you got there's only a couple reviews out on it at this point the rear hub motor like i mentioned is 750 watts it puts out 80 newton meters of torque and uh, is 20 amps and you can lock the suspension in case you don't want to have it for trail riding or other times too. Like sometimes if you're transporting this in a bike rack, you don't want it bouncing in the bike rack as you drive down the highway. So you lock the suspension first. It's got a front headlight, rear taillight and brake lights. It has a 12.8 amp hour battery, 615 watt hours. It's contained up here in the, in the frame, well protected. I'll show you how to get that out in a minute. And you can charge it either in the frame here through a charging port right here, which is covered by a rubber plug. Or you can take the battery out, which is important in the winter time when you wanna keep it inside where it's protected from uh, severe cold. Now the manufacturer claims 30 to 50 miles range on the battery and and uh that's you have to understand that's on really in in really ideal conditions flat surfaces 170 pound rider things like that um, i show later on in this video what i actually got out of it when i actually abuse the battery and use all the power i can it um, it doesn't do that but it does pretty darn good so stay tuned for that the key here is underneath and you need to be able to turn the bike off and on down here also, this is what unlocks the battery to get the battery out. While you're riding, you will have a key inserted here, but when it's turned on, the key is locked in. It is a little difficult to get to because of these wires, but I just move them out of the way with my hand like that and reach in from the other side with my other hand and operate the key. Up here, you can see that plug I was talking about for charging, it's right there. This is the locking mechanism. To unlock it, you flip this lever up, and then you pull this and that unlocks this joint. This is an adjustment in case the, the locking uh, wears a little bit. You can back this out a little bit and make it tighter again. And that keeps it from coming open on you while you're riding. To fold this bike up, you flip this lever up here, flip this over like that. I like the, the handle here in the middle. It's, it's in the middle and it's pretty well balanced there. Then you just fold it up like that. Wow. 
You can strap these uh, this tire over. You can you can put a strap through here to kind of hold this together. Now you can also fold down these handlebars. There's a lever on the side, and the handle handlebars fold over like that. You have to unlock the battery with the, by turning the key down here. Pull the key out because the key is up, inserted up into the battery, right? And then you can slide the battery right out like that. Setting the bike back up is fairly easy because it locks so fast. By the way, when it comes to, let me put the handlebars up here. And this is pretty easy too. I actually like to work on the battery when the bike is up like this because it's just easier for me to get to, even though I got to kind of hold on to the bike like this, but I can just get at the battery and pull it out this way, sideways like this. And it's easier for me to reach the key, but anyway. And then just lock it down. Like that. Now what about that stand on the bottom? Is it going to get in the way while you're riding? Let's take a close look at that. If you're one of my regular viewers, you'll know that one of these stands is how is what caused Linda to break her ankle because it caught onto some terrain that she was riding over and uh, stopped her bike cold and threw her off. But this stand is a lot higher than that stand was. This one is twice as high as that stand was. It only sticks down here just a little bit below this front ring here. So this one is actually pretty good. It's a lot higher. It, like I say, this is twice as high, I think almost. So this one isn't gonna cause you any trouble. If you're digging this in, then you're you're gonna dig your your uh, front sprocket in too, so this one's good. Well, up here in the cockpit, you've got really smooth brake levers. I don't feel any grinding or dragging in them. This is your control here. There's a button on the bottom to uh, turn it off and on. There's a uh, mode button up here to cycle through the different modes, and this there's a button on the side down here that uh, turns the headlights and headlight and taillight off and on. And once again, I like having a button just to turn the headlight off and on all by itself rather than having to hold two buttons to do that. This is way more convenient. This is for increasing and decreasing the amount of pedal assistance. When you first turn the bike on, it has zero pedal assistance. So you push this once and it gives you one and then two, three, four, and five. And in five, it's basically doing all the work for you as you pedal or you don't pedal at all. You can just use the half twist throttle, which is over here on this side. It does come with a bike bell, not much of one though, but I'd personally put on something nicer with a nice long ring, but it has one anyway. Now you can get into the settings and you can increase the display. Now this display is, is uh, really bright. It's not on its brightest settings and I have no trouble at all seeing it in the sunshine right now, as you can too, I can see that. So it's basically got your battery monitor up here, your speed, your level of pedal assistance right there, and how many miles, you know, your trip miles down here. This is on trip right now. Over here is your Shimano shifter, seven speeds. Go into lower gears here or push the button here to go back into higher gears. Pretty easy. Now they did include a manual on this display here that shows you how to make all the changes inside that you want to. Well, okay, let's do the hill climb. Very light breeze, kind of similar to the other ones I've done. And uh, throttle only up this hill, we'll see how it does. Fourteen, still accelerating. Now it's gone down a little bit again. Thirteen, ten. Nine point six. And now going up again.
Okay, as for the hill climb, that's not really great, but I didn't have to pedal. <laughs> so it's not bad either. Now's a good time to test the brakes. Zipping along here about 20. Oh, I can lock them up easy. Okay, good brakes. Okay, it has five levels of pedal assist. The lowest level has a top speed of about, oh, seven and a half miles an hour. So if you come in with just throttle and you're on a level hill, surface, you'll get about seven and a half. If you go to speed level, or I'm sorry, pedal assist level two, that's gonna give you about eight and a half or nine miles an hour. And what that means is the motor will assist you up to that speed. It's really handy when you're trying to go slower <laughs> and you don't want the bike to just keep accelerating as you pedal. It just kind of stops at that speed. On pedal assist level number three, that gives you a top speed of about 14 on a level surface. On pedal assist level number four, it's higher. And on pedal assist level number five, it's going to give you your top speed. One thing that it has is an automatic cruise control. If you're just cruising along at the same speed with your hand on the throttle and you hold it for about eight or 10 seconds, when you take your hand off, it just keeps going at that speed. Okay, I think I'm in a good place to test top speed. We'll need to test it in two different directions because I've got, I'm going into a pretty stiff headwind here. Twenty point five. 20.8. Okay, the top speed that way was 20.8. Let's go the other way. I think this is going to be a pretty big difference. Twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty five point two. Okay, twenty five point two. So the difference is between twenty point eight and twenty five point two. So the top speed is right at about 22 and a half miles an hour. If I would have come in with pedal assist, I don't think I would have gone faster because I run out of pedal at about, uh, at about 20 miles an hour. The handling characteristics are good and I feel like I'm in control all the time. <clears throat> However, on these folding e-bikes, the front forks are really vertical and you don't have a lot of stability. So it takes a little getting used to, but um, I feel like I'm in fully in control of it. The front suspension is working really well. The asphalt I've been on today is rough and it takes the shock out of my, you know, out of it, out of the bike for my wrists. That feels pretty good. There's no rear suspension, but the seat is comfortable. Well, the donut shop is open and I went in and I scored fresh donuts. I had my, I thought I had my camera on when I went inside, but it was off. Oh, next time. Well, going up this incline here, it's a constant incline, slight incline, and I'm just effortlessly cruising along at about 17, 18 miles an hour. Well, I've got 13 miles on the bike. And I've been in level four and five most of the time. Used a lot of throttle only. You've seen me do that hill climb test. It took me three, three different uh, opportunities to do the high speed test because I couldn't find a decent level spot to do it. Uh, 
So I burned up a lot of battery doing that. Right now I'm down to two bars of battery. I've been mashing the throttle a lot and just getting on it. Boy, none of these, uh, or very few of these neighborhood intersections have stop signs. You gotta be really careful. And even though I'm wearing blaze orange and a bright lime green helmet, uh, sometimes they just don't see me. Okay, there's a hill coming up here and we're just gonna do throttle only on it. It's a pretty good little hill. Okay, level five and throttle only. Eighteen six. Seventeen five. Now it's back up to eighteen, eighteen five. Doing really well. 16.8, 16.7, just before I got to the crest. That's pretty nice. I've been pedaling around now in pedal assist level number four and uh, up to 14 and a half miles. I just, I think I'll just keep riding and see what happens. Once again, I'm abusing it. I'm not trying to get as much as I can. I'm trying to see how long it'll go if I use a lot of throttle only and... Okay, 21.3 miles and it's just creeping along here. The battery's toast. I mean, it's done. Uh, that last bar took a long time. It got to the point to where I was purposely just trying to kill it. <laughs> I was up in level five and just using just nothing but throttle and seeking out hills and everything, but it got 21 miles uh, on the battery, even though I was purposely abusing it, doing all those speed tests and hill climbs and everything. And, and I'm still rolling. It hasn't totally shut off, but it's pretty much flat. Now, how about just for pedaling without battery, which is what I'm doing right now. And the bike pedals very, very easily. Yeah, I'm going up this hill here. Not bad. It pedals a lot easier than a big fat tire e-bike when you run out of battery. So you see, I got 21.3 miles after doing hill climbs, a couple of them, and speed tests, and using level four and five, and a lot of throttle only uh, on the ride. I still got 21.3 miles, and I think that's pretty good. You gotta think about it this way. This, this battery isn't as big as some other batteries on, on bigger e-bikes, and it's because this is a fold-up model, right? You can have a lot of power for a short period of time, or you can have less power for a longer period of time, and that's what this bike has. So this 12.8 amp hour battery is enough to probably give you uh, 20 to 40 miles of, of riding, Figure on 30 if you're pedaling and you know and helping out a lot. You're going to get 30 easy on this bike, uh, really easy actually, if you like to pedal a bit. And when I say pedal, I'm not talking about hard pedaling. I'm just talking about enjoyable pedaling. Um, the bike itself is well manufactured. It's strong. Uh, there's there's nothing uh, cheap about the way that it's put together. It's put together really well. It's heavy duty. This bike folds up smaller than others on the market. So if you're looking for a folding e-bike because of lack of space, maybe you want to put it inside your RV, inside a van, or inside the closet in your apartment, this one does fold up a lot smaller. For example, a Rad Mini has, when it's folded up, has a footprint of 41 inches by 28 inches. The electric has a footprint of 37 inches by 27 inches. And this one folds up with a footprint of only 30 inches by 32 inches. So it folds up really small. It's a class three bike, which means that it will give you motor assist up to 28 miles an hour. I kind of run out of pedal around 21 miles an hour myself, but it's there if you can do it. <laughs>
Personally, if I'm going if I'm going that fast, I'm just going to come in with a throttle. <laughs> That's what e-bikes are all about. You know, if it wasn't for e-bikes, I wouldn't be riding at all. With I've got two torn meniscus. E-bikes have made it possible for folks like myself, my age, to get out and enjoy biking again. And e-bikes have made it a lot of fun for people younger than us just to get out and ride. So the pros and the cons. Well, the cons is it is a smaller bike. And the handling is more touchy. That's because the slope here at the front fork is more vertical. So it, it's the steering is more touchy on it. You're gonna get that with any folding e-bike. That's one of the trade-offs. The fact that it does fold up, I think is one of the best features on it, especially if you need a folding e-bike. This, this is a good one to look at. One really nice feature of this bike is its price. Right now, it's at with a $250 discount, it's down at $989 on sale. This bike is priced a lot lower than other folding e-bikes on the market. You check it out and you'll see that. So yeah, I think you should look at this one. It feels pretty good. If you're looking for a folding e-bike, this one, this one is one to consider for sure, especially at that price. And it does come with a one-year warranty. Hey, I hope you liked the review. If you did, like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you around. Okay.